Hello and welcome viewers of AVG News. My name is Mkolisi, the son of Nube. We have today in the program Know My Africa a guest, uh, a very special guest, let me say. Her name is Koko Mamabolo. She's a community activist. She is also from the inclusive truth and reconciliation movement. Uh, she will introduce the movement for the benefit of our viewers. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And uh, to all the viewers, um, children of Africa at large in the world, I'd like to say welcome to the show. Um, Africa Unite, and I'd like to say hello to everyone around the world in Africa. And um, welcome to this beautiful show. We're going to learn about our movement, which is um, inclusive, which is inclusive a movement around the truth and reconciliation. Okay, when you say it's called the inclusive truth and reconciliation movement, what is behind the name? Why truth and reconciliation movement? So basically, um, it's for the future generation whereby we are saying that for us to continue and to integrate with other people or other race, we should be given a chance to get to know our own truth so that we can actually reconcile with other people. I'm going to just give other example. Yes. We have Africans that are living in America. They were never told the truth that they are African. They left Africa through slavery. And then at a later stage now, they are faced with movements such as Black Lives Matter, yes, yes. which I feel that every child need to be rooted, need to know where they're coming from, so that they can make better choices in life. Okay. Uh, and obviously, for you to be able to come out, for, for you to, to come up with such a movement, you would have identified some gaps here and there. South Africa is a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, there are still efforts, you, you still have your equality codes, you still have laws that are uh, anti-crime, anti-hate uh, laws. Now, what gaps did you identify for you to be able to come up with this movement, which you want to, to, to maybe fill in? So there are different um, programs that we have identified, which the current one, we are working on the religion. Okay. Let me just give you the example. Here in South Africa, the main church is Dutch Reform. Yes. And then comes Roman Catholic Church. The name itself, it tells you that the church is from Rome, it's not African church. Yes. And you don't have the actual African church. The African church, they are called demonic. Yet we are in Africa. You have churches like Catholic churches, which it continue to discriminate other Africans. You have Dutch reform. It tells you very clear that it's from Netherlands and Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an African church or African religion. So we have identified the religion part because our souls as African children, it matter. So when you talk about religion, are you talk, you, you've mentioned the Dutch Reformed Church, you've mentioned the Roman Catholic Church. These are Christian movements. It's not uh, only um, okay. um, Christian per se. I want to just ask even other Africans to say, or Muslim people, can they allow themselves to be converted into African religion and just be okay with that? The Muslim community, can they allow themselves today to say, come Muslim community, bring your children, they are going to attend African school, they are leaving Muslim schools and they're going to learn about Africa and then that will not be called haram. Uh, what I need to understand is, uh, I believe that I'm a Christian myself. Uh, not a staunch one, I grew up in a Christian background, Christian family. I attended a school that gave me this Christian teaching. We were learning the Bible, scripture unions, we attended some by force. Yes. But I, when I grew up, I had a choice, I still have a choice to maybe convert to Islam, Baha'i faith and others, but I still chose to remain calling myself Christian. 
I believe that when somebody grows up, they they need to have that choice. So when you say you would most Muslims convert or take their children to African schools and stuff, I, I don't understand. Are you saying that there should be a reversal of religious indoctrination? Is that what you're saying? So I'm going to just say maybe you think that you had a choice. Um, most children here in Africa, yeah. they get baptized while they're still small to even make choices. Yes. And um, if you're saying you are Christian, Christ, he said he's the Lion of Judah. Mm. Judah is not in Africa. That's true. Right. Judah is not in Africa. Every child must know that they are African before they call themselves Christians because they some of them they don't even know where christianity come from even as we go further within the bible and i have to put this in record yes i read the bible of christianity i even got um, ordained as yes. archbishop somewhere in my life there is no scripture that say baptize children yes but people are busy baptizing children. And that itself, to be baptized, basically they are forcing a child, something that the child does not have a will or a choice. Yes. At any age. And they cannot even explain to us what do they mean when they are actually baptizing children. Furthermore, when we look at Africa itself, now I'm talking for other race. Yes. Look at the African calendar. Our new year is in September. Then you go December time. You have a man called Father Christmas. Yes. The man, he's wearing winter clothing. And most of the time, those men, they are sweating because they are using the Gregory calendar. Yes. which then in Europe is winter around December. That December, their winter, it starts with the date of 25 December is when their winter starts. Then that itself, it colonized the mind of an African child because by then, September is the new year. Then we are preparing to plant. Then come December, it's time for harvest. When an African child, they're trying to harvest, there is Father Christmas in the corner. He's talking about Christmas clothing. And people are not employed. People are not employed. Africa is suffering already. There come the very same 25 December. If I can say Christians, pastors, priests, everyone come together, show me 25 December in your Bible. There is no such thing. Yeah, that's true. And yet people are spending a lot of money. 25 December, they are going to different churches, going to attend different functions. Yet even they forget 16 June, whereby in South Africa is the day of reconciliation because we are coming from the past. Yes. As a country, we need to reconcile from the past and heal. But then that day now, is, it has been turned as a day of just enjoying drinking and stuff like that because people, they don't know their African time. They don't know even that it's time to uh, prepare themselves for them to harvest. Okay, so your call, if I get you well, I think you've explained it, is not for other people to forsake their religion, but for Africans to rediscover themselves yes. and break free of this colonization. Yes. So now, how are you approaching this? Because... As you are saying already, and as, as I already said about my own background, an African child grows up, even from a, an, an atheist family, they go to school. When they go there, they are taught scriptures. I was beaten up. I, came, I come from Zimbabwe. I remember there was a time when we were, somebody just came, they gave us these uh, New Testament books, mm -hmm. and then we took them. The following day, just out of the blue, the teacher comes, wants us to memorize a verse. 
we stood in a queue. You had to memorize a verse, say which verse it is, and what it says. But you cannot repeat what somebody else has said, which means in a school with, in a class with 45 kids, we each had to know 45 different verses. Now we were beaten up for not knowing these verses, which is it's an indoctrination. And we were taught nothing else but Christianity at school. So now the problem is deeper than we may just say. But now, how do you approach this? How do you hope this is going to be, I mean, possible? And um, with what you just mentioned now, I'm just getting emotional. Because... Uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm just getting emotional. You say you're from Zimbabwe. Yes. You remind me the King Monomotab. Yes. Of the great Zimbabwe. Yes. Who he has lost his own kingdom. When I'm talking about kingdom, I mean the whole empire. Yes. Just after being baptized. Just being baptized and receiving this Christianity. Yeah. That was the death of Munamutapa. I'm from the royal kingdom of Mujaj. Okay. Whereby the rain making queen of Badovedu. Whereby because she was able to make the rain and um, they were unable, the Buas, the white, the West, they were unable to fight her back. They decided to name the place where she's coming from Devil's Cliff. Devil's Cliff, it means Devil, Devil's Cliff, yes, yes. which today is Mojaji's Cliff. So, what I'm saying is that allow African child, can the world allow African child to know themselves? Then once we know who we are, our origin, then we can integrate with other societies yes. because we were never given a chance. Yeah, but uh, when you look at the post-colonial state in Africa, it rather than going back to basics, yeah. it adopted yes. the, the European systems yes. and it calls it civilization. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing designer clothes right now. Yes. <laughs> if I meet somebody in knowing clothes or having a traditional headband, mm -hmm. I believe they're backward. Mm -hmm. I've been insulted in a number of places for pouring scorn at African tradition, <laughs> traditional <Yeah>. way, <laughs> especially from our guys in Zimbabwe, we've mm. got Ndebele's here, mm. trying to revive Ndebele culture. Mm. And I've been one of the people who have been rebuking them for that, mm. poking fun at them. Mm -hmm. And that should tell you how deep we are in this uh, colonial system mm. that we inherited. Mm. Even the government, go to any government in Africa, every holiday, as you've already said, mm. there's no African holiday. Yes. We can celebrate culture day, blah, 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 but there is just a... because we want to not go to work on that particular day, but at the end of the day, it means nothing to us. Mm -hmm. So now, how possible is it without the involvement of government? Or oh, you are involved in government here and there because the government itself has the duty to make sure that a people discover themselves, they rediscover themselves, and they go back to basics. Uh, basically, what we are saying, um, we don't want to go deeper and blame the government, yeah. nor our leaders. We have to be fair as youth. Our um, elders, they have, um, they went to exile. Yes. We didn't go to exile. They were beaten so bad, extremely bad. They fought for this freedom. And while they were fighting for it, they were arrested. I take you uh, from Balobedu, let's say um, the late Mwakura Malebe, who he was assassinated for organizing students to say, let's join the Steve Biko, let's join the SRC of Peter Mokaba. Mm -hmm. He was assassinated as a teacher. 
he lost his life. We are here as youth. We are alive. The government, they fought enough. What is it that we are doing? They fought without any support. No government it was supporting them during that time. If they were able to do it, me and you, what are we doing? Well, I've got reservations with you saying we're not in any agreement. We didn't go to exile because I'm in exile. Yes. And one thing that I believe Africans were fighting for, mm. they were not only fighting for their land, they were not only fighting for freedom in terms of who is uh, ruling them. Mm. They were also fighting for religious freedom that you're talking about. Mm. But my belief is that, um, not to second guess what you're saying, of course, but my belief is that uh, the government itself has a role to play. Or let me say politicians, even government, because they give us the curriculum that our students, our children go through. They give us this religious literature, which is still colonizing our children. We have seen some politicians going to these happy clappy churches, mm -hmm. led by fraudsters calling themselves pastors, mm -hmm. who are robbing people of their hard earned cash, these fake prophets, yes. today is exposed, tomorrow there is election, you find politicians there. So in a way, they're also enforcing this. That's why I'm saying, do you think, don't you think that there is something that government itself and politicians should do to make sure that whatever you are fighting, which is also what I'm fighting for, yes. is real ones? So um, I, I totally agree with what you just said. And uh, but we must also remember that even during apartheid, yes. within politics, there is always, I call them the amateurs, but you know? Yes, yes. Within any movement, even within politics of um, the apartheid, you have other leaders that sold our true leaders. Yes. So, we are engaging through other stakeholders okay. within government. They are good politicians. They are authentic politicians. They are, I call them pan-Africanists. Yeah. They are they. We are engaging with them. But within Africa, yes, even today, we even have other youth that if you talk about African religion, they are quick to call you demon. Yes, and yes. demonize you and go and protect or call you part of haram and go and protect the oppressors. Yes. So our responsibility right now is for youth to be more vibrant on African issues without a shame. We must be active on our own issues than trying to protect the oppressors or part of the enemies and we believe that when each one of us know their own roots they are automatically grounded they know every child must know that i'm an african yes. and the foreigner is jesus is from judah he's not from africa african shouldn't call other african foreigners the foreigner here is jesus he's from judah he was not born here in Africa. Is Dutch, Rome is not part of Africa. Yes. And that is a fact. And then also we should not even get emotional around such issues. We should be youth that is able to listen to the truth, the inclusive truth, the truth the way it is, and accept it the way it is so that we are able to reconcile with other people because we cannot move forward or grow while we are working with lies because lies have short legs automatically. Yes, um, perhaps you should know this. I come from a place in Zimbabwe called Matopo. Mm -hmm. We've got this rock called Tijere. Yeah. Uh, at some point, many people know it as a rain-making shrine, but it was bigger than that. Yeah. It would cure illnesses. People would yeah. go there yeah. to, cure, to, to, to have their illnesses cured. Yeah. But we have forsaken that. We've forgotten about it. Yeah. And many people who come from the same place yeah. now no longer believe in it. Yeah. Now, when you say because you've chosen religion, 
the decolonization of religion mm. as one of the entry points. Mm. Who are you working with in terms of state work, stakeholders? You've spoken about stakeholders mm. and some within political parties and stuff. Mm. Who else are you working with to make sure that this movement gathers momentum? Okay, so uh, we just mentioned something that is very good in, 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 in Zimbabwe. Yes. Here in South Africa, Venda, we have yes. Njelele. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you see, uh, which it come from a part of Mapungube. Yeah, that's very true. Even the one that we have there, um, it's been uh, the custodians. Yes. Uh, they now call them Mubes, but they are originally Sisiba, mm -hmm. which is Mbeti. Mm -hmm. And they are from Mapungube, as you are saying. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are working with um, traditional healers because uh, traditional healers or African religion, yes. it was the first people that they were excluded during the Truth and Reconciliation. The Truth and Reconciliation was led by Archbishop Tutu, yes. which the man was also colonized. Yeah was an archbishop for Christianity and even during the the whole proceeding he was wearing his cross you know yes, yes. to say I'm ready to carry the heaviest <laughs> cross yes, yes. Um, of Jesus and but we cannot blame him we cannot blame him because you will understand that even our um, leaders or pan-Africanists they were colonized yes. They were fighting different type of fights. It was, you know, freedom um, to just be able to go to school, to just be able to walk in the same street with other people, to just be considered as human beings. So with age, a human being, they get exhausted. Yes. That's why I'm saying we need African vibrant youth that will come to the party and say uh, Pambili with African religion Pambili Pambili with African unity Pambili Pambili with African kingdoms let's say you say you're from Zimbabwe yes I will tell you I dreamed in Biro and I'm in South Africa I dreamed in Biro and I told my family that look I'm dreaming this. I draw that thing for them. They like I was like it was playing like a a, a keyboard. Yeah. My family they like no, you don't know what you are going through. I even went for the keyboard class. What can I do? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, I'm a keyboard player. Okay, okay. And then five years down the line, I dream being in Venta. Okay. Then that led me to Zimbabwe. Okay. <laughs> to okay. my own roots. Yes. I found what I've been dreaming about. Yeah. And which at this current moment it helps me with um, a meditation before I sleep. When I when my emotions I feel like today is not a beautiful day, you know, even if it's a beautiful day, when I wanna be happy, I play my mbira. Yeah. Uh, and then you're from a real family. What role do you think traditional leaders in Africa, not only in South Africa, mm -hmm. can play in trying to revive African tradition, but not only African tradition, mm -hmm. also African spirituality? Because mm -hmm. I don't believe in religion, I believe in spirituality. Yes. Uh, what role do uh, traditional leaders have in trying to, to revive this? They have a huge role. That is the actually they are the person, people that they should be really involved. But now we are sitting with within governments, the whole Africa, the West powers yes. that is fiddling with their mind. And whoever that pay you or give you money, they control you. And it's, I'm calling upon these traditional uh, leaders to say we no longer want money from government. Yeah. 
we want to have the actual power, the true power, because the traditional leaders basically, they were the ones that are holding different kingdoms. Let's say the kingdom of Monomota. Yes. That was a full operation whereby mining, everything was just happening there. Yes, yes. And then so that the king is able to feed the nation. Yeah. But today's kings, they want to be fed by government. But they have lost their land to the government. Not all of them. Okay. Not all of them. Number one, let's say around Africa, we have homelands. Yes, yes, that's true. But then they don't even encourage their people to farm. They don't encourage there are people to farm. They don't even create ceremonies um, of dances. They don't even go to government to say, government, within my kingdom, I'm asking for money. Yeah. Just to say every weekend, we're going to have a dance here. We reteach really our people, you know, our cultures and stuff like that. They don't do that. That's true. They're just sitting waiting for money from government and then the very same people that they are ruled by the kings they are unemployed youth is they are unemployed they don't have skills and then the kings want money from the government the kings want african youth to rely from the west for employment yeah um now are you in touch with other uh let me say movements that are pushing the same call with you from here in South Africa and other African countries? Yes, we are engaging, we are engaging with other stakeholders, different stakeholders, including the ambassadors okay. of Africa, yes. And how is the response? The response, others, they come in positive, and um, others, universities also, because we are big with the youth, because it's a youth vibrant uh, uh, movement to say, I need a true information. Yes. Don't give me false information for me to run around with false information. Don't tell me that I'm a Christian, I'm an African. And then also to say even other Africans that are having Islam names yeah. or Christian names, they must just go and go and say, look, we no longer want these names. They don't have meaning. Let's say my African name. Mama, the mother of initiates. Yes. I'm part of what your makas, okay. your mapula, the mother yes. of the ray. Yes. So those things they make sense to your own mind, because then we will end up accepting names that maybe it means a horrible thing, and you just accept and then yes. because it's from the book, and not only that. We cannot belittle ourselves to believe into the God of the book. That means anyone who is bringing you a little book like Testament, you said you guys, you were given, then someone come after a few days. If you don't know each and every scripture, you get beaten. Yeah. That means your God is book-based. So we're saying African youth, they must go all out whatever information they are receiving they must take it go make research scrutinize this information they verify if this is a true information the disadvantage the advantage before you can actually accept not everything i receive i receive you can even receive a snake and you can bite you uh, one of the weaknesses of african religion or spirituality or tradition for history is that we didn't write. Mm. There is credit of I wrote a number of books, they're very expensive. Mm. Very few people can afford them and they're not available in PDF. Mm. Is there an effort by your movement to try and help people write all of these books or maybe to approach government and say, one of the ways we have been indoctrinated has been through the school curriculum which teaches us a certain religion or another. Can we have, if African spirituality and African tradition cannot be learned in the schools, then let's have every form of religion taken out of this of this school curriculum. Can um, we try that? 
So I want to just say that um, we are currently um, speaking to Heritage Council. Okay. And this has got to do with our own African people. As an African person, you must have a consciousness. Yes. More than anything, consciousness, not something that is written. As I'm talking to you right now, Heritage Council said we do have funding. Anyone who wants to tell African stories, you can apply. There yeah. is a grant. And our people, are they willing to apply for such grant or not? Even right now, our people, they are not employed. Yeah. Most of them, they are not employed. But children, they end up going and taking drugs. You don't have, in Sipid, you call them Kiba. But I do have those children that I train to play Kiba, to play horns. I do have those children. Uh, African people, they not even volunteering themselves within their own communities to say, we can have a children's club. Yeah. They don't volunteer themselves. They just wait here for government because of what the mentality of I receive, I receive. What are you receiving? Yeah, and the other thing is we have African children now dying in taverns. Exactly. You remember that story of children that died in a tavern. Plenty mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. dozens of them. We have children mm -hmm. being shot in taverns. Mm -hmm. We have some taking up, I mean, even getting into trucks. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your movement doing to try and reverse all these things? Are you reaching out to the youth? Because yeah, we are. You, are, you are speaking to the youth right now, yes. partly. But what programs do you have for the youth to make sure that they jump in this, uh, into this bandwagon of saying, we are turning the wheel around, we are rediscovering our Africanness? Yes, so we um, I work with the youth so much, right? Okay. We do have youth groups, right? Okay. We have partnered Libo Mama in different communities. Okay. And then we have booklets that we are giving to them to say this is the program, how to run a program, right? And then we are also supporting them so that they teach these young ones who they are and then what is the trouble around this Western alcohol. Yeah. I will call it alcohol, uh, Western alcohol because if I take Mikumbuti, yeah. Mikumbuti has been around for such a long time. And, um, but people, they were not misbehaving like the way this alcohol, modern spirits, all these different brands of alcohol, Western alcohol, people, they are misbehaving. If you check on the 1st January 2023, yeah. Children, young children, less than 13 years, less than around 11 years after the new year, the Gregory new year. Yes. Children, they were seen drunk carrying alcohol as if it's just the business of the day. Yeah. And um, from spirituality, we know why. Because uh, January, January is the spirit of two faced. It was an old person from Greek that was a drunk person. So, this new year is to celebrate the birth of that person. Because in September, you will never see African being so drunk like nobody's business and even getting into debts. But take it that first January, that year, people, that is the beginning of their travels. But how is the reception you are receiving out there? Um, I can say the reception is quite good, and uh, but we still need more African youth that are vibrant to say they want to really, really do, do this um, projects because then you have others that are one leg in, one leg, leg out. Others, they like it, but they are not willing to volunteer themselves. 
and to say they can go all out, yeah. right? They st- and others also, they do have challenges to say they are employed by the West. Mm-hmm. So they cannot speak up like myself. I'm not I'm employed by our sisters. So <laughs> um, I don't depend on um, the West. <laughs> yeah, and that takes us back to the one issue that you've mentioned as the main problem, the issue of poverty. People are unemployed because we're brought up in such a condition or a situation where we need to be employed mm. in these white collar jobs. Yeah. We do. That's why we go to school. Mm-hmm. So when I go to school, there are people are resisting uh, their calling, for example. Yes. Because I'm a professor, and now I have to go back and be wearing these loin clothes and attending to people. To my peers, uh, it's a step backwards. Mm-hmm. Now, but mainly because I've got a family to support. How do you balance these things to make sure, to, to make sure that even those who are in pursuit uh, of uh, financial freedom also get to engage in this activity. So what we do, we are also in talk with um, other organizations of um, decolonization. Okay. And then also we do have our meetings where we sit and share the Africanism. Let's say I'm going to give you an example with um, Dr. Esther Malang. Yes, yes. Um, even myself, I'm good with art. Okay. I'm good with art. I did not go and study art. I studied engineering. Okay. But my great grandmother, she did teach me while I was growing up uh, through the house making or house art. Okay. So certain things they are spiritual like that african people with our own hands we are able and which is an education or a blessing from the, our ancestors we are able to create wealth out of the gift from god that's true that's true <laughs> that's very true exactly even myself today I left my job with was paying me good money as a manager, worked corporate over ten years, I graduated, I do have honors and okay. years. <laughs> but what really assisted me to be able to move forward it was because of my great grandmother. She decolonized myself before. Yeah. So when things were not going so well for me because I was then sick before I can accept my spiritual calling. Um, my dad said to me, I'm going to go to your workplace and tell them that I came to fetch you. Because I myself, I almost died yeah. because of not yeah. wanting to accept the spiritual calling, but it was it was during apartheid, so I could not accept it. Yeah. I was involved in a car accident, and I stopped working because ancestors didn't want me to work for the Western powers. Yeah, and my dad said to me, "So you are my child." I started not working while you were two months. People were busy on my ears saying, you have a small child. And my dad asked me, is there any single day that you find yourself without a meal in your table? I said, no. He said, okay, you still my child. Leave that 60000 that you are getting from your workplace. You're going to be initiated. We knew before you were born that you are gifted one. Okay. Yeah, and then as we draw close to the end of the program, mm-hmm. there is, there has been an attempt before by the likes of Steve Biko to try to decolonize the African mind, especially in terms of religion. Mm-hmm. There is Joshua Mapong, I think you know about him. Yeah. He is busy and he has been excommunicated from the SDA church, which I also go to, <laughs> because of challenging these, some of these things. He's mm-hmm. not challenging the Bible per se, but he's saying, he's re explaining some of these things that mm-hmm. there can be no religion 
without pursuit of first land mm. uh, riches here on earth mm. because the same people are telling us that there mm. are more riches in heaven are killing each other here for earthly riches exactly yeah but these movements the still Biko movement was called the consciousness movement yes. he didn't after his demise it kind of fell off let me say mm-hmm. maponga is seen as a one man gang mm-hmm. some people are even insulting him mm-hmm. because the african mind is already in a state where i think i would say of of no return so are you looking forward to miracles to make this thing work so we we are believing in um the ancestors Okay. I'm the example of the miracle. I'm the living example. Yeah. What corporate over 10 years um graduated at Unicide University of Johannesburg. I've used to identify myself as per my position at work. Yeah. That was my identity. I left and then after leaving the job that corporate that 80,000 60,000 package here yeah, i am so, so how, yeah i think the ancestors they work on time base and we've seen even other people you know banning the bible other people they no longer want to go to church so there is a progress and we are saying this is a youth movement and we should protect the next generation some of us yes we are colonized but for the next generation enough is enough this thing of now people are having clothing account with the debts they want buying power so that every december they are buying this christmas clothes this where is this uh, christ where is this guy he was born in bethlehem he said this the lion of judah no he must do his things in judah we appreciate him he must go and find his own people because if you go to judaism yes they are refusing him that's true <clears throat> even themselves they said they don't know him they are going with him as we say we don't know this guy <laughs> because now they created a business of his body that little biscuit that they are eating yeah that biscuit is quite expensive and then that is not even manufactured to empower an african child but why is it taking so long for the african god to first of all speak to african people and secondly to fight for african people for the reversal of this same colonization that we talked about I think they they've really done well that they doing their well because if you check just here in South Africa how many years we are into freedom and if you check um the period of slavery it was too long let's see now we are in contact with Americans yes we do meet Americans black Americans which they are coming to Africa to say they want africa the motherland and i don't believe that america ever thought that those people one day they will remember africa and yes. cry and now they are calling themselves african american exactly yeah and then with the black life matters they really african americans they're fed up they want to come back to africa yeah because the west they proven to africa that we are enemies and how is the proliferation of fake traditional healers we have seen that here in jobek we mm-hmm. that people complaining there are people going especially if you go to facebook mm-hmm. the people advertising themselves mm-hmm. as a uh, wealth givers and they claim they are traditional healers they've got these uh rehearsed messages that are always the same they only change the number Mm. and they're busy fishing on on social media how does it affect your work yeah so basically those are criminals yeah those are criminals um is affecting african religion and also we have others that they call themselves killers while well, they are killers yes and they are known killers they are using african religion 
to do the work of the darkness. Yes. It's just like African um, religion or African tradition, um, herbalism. We are basically doctors. We are similar yes. as any doctor. That's true. Even, you know, medical doctor was then. So whatever that we are carrying is obvious is drugs. Yeah. It's drugs. It's natural drugs. So that's why I'm even aging to upcoming Sangomas to say, please have black consciousness. Yes. Have black consciousness to say, with this drug, with this gift, I must just use it to serve God of light, Ramasaid Muhammad. Muhal. Yes. And not misuse the drugs. It's just like medical doctors. They can mix those drugs and it become overdose. Someone can yeah, die at any time. Yes. So can we connect back to black consciousness? Because those herbs that we are using, they don't belong to us. Yes. We are being given and the complication or the after effects, I'm just saying to all the healers, that is very bad. That's why some, you will see some sangomas. You can be a sangomas, it's fine, but you find that the ancestors punish you with your own child. That's true. They punish you, they say, high price that you're going to pay for allowing yourself to be a killer instead of a healer. Yes, yes. Um, right, uh, as we round off, is there anything that you'd like to say to the audience? Yes, um, I just want to thank um, your program and I'm just saying keep on pressing on and then also to all African youth. Yes. We are saying Africa rise, Africa unite. Zimbabwean brother is your brother. Malawian brother is your brother. Nigerian sister is your sister. Teach yourself to talk the truth even though it's not comfortable. Yes. And then anything that is wrong, that you see that is wrong, speak out. Even if you see Nigerian brother selling drugs, Stand against him. Don't allow yourself to be part of that crime. Yes. Even if you see an African sister that say, look, I'm looking for a Nigerian man so that this man can give me money. Stand against that sister because that is a crime. It's not love. Love is not money. That's true. L love is true love. It's something that you feel in your heart. And then love is not something that you can buy. That's Our true. parents love us without money. They still love us. Money is not everything because that itself, many young women, they are dropping out of schools because they have Nigerian brothers. Now, Nigerian brothers, they don't respect other African men because they claim to have more cash. Yet that money is from the drug crime. Yeah. And then now they are getting arrested. So at the end of the day, it means that we will not have African families anymore. That's true. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. The program is No My Africa. I'm Olisi, the son of Nube. We thank our guest, Coco Mamabolo. But with the reserve of knowledge that she has proven herself to be, we will continue inviting her. I think there will be a time where with her permission, of course, we will have to visit African religion, or not, not I, I don't want to call it religion, African okay. spirituality, spirituality, chapter by chapter as to how do we do this, why do we do this, what should we do here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Coco. We hope to have you here once again. Thank you very much to all the listeners at home. And we say Pambili with African unity, Pambili. And to all the guests, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share it. Thank you. Thank you.